I don't know how it is for you, but I always enjoy celebrating July 4th. It's a time I look forward to when we celebrate our freedom and our, our, our faith and our nation's independence. You know, many of us, when we're asked about patriotism, we think of the American flag and fireworks and parades and the soldiers who battled and fought for our freedom. Often the idea of prayer is not linked to patriotism at all. But I believe that the more patriotic we become, either individually or as a nation, I believe the more we will want to pray for our country. And when we speak about our nation and the need for prayer, uh, often we hear someone reference 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is an all too familiar scripture. It's easy to read and understand, but I believe it's more important that we do what we're challenged to do by that scripture, and that is pray. Listen to the verse with me, 2 Chronicles 7.14 where we read, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And it goes on in verse 15 to say, my eyes will be open and ears attentive to the prayer that is made. The truth is that our nation was birthed out of prayer. The declaration on uh, of independence on July 4th, 1776, was first preempted with our founding fathers praying. During the first Continental Congress meeting, September 4th, 1774, uh, during those two years between there and 1776, the delegates prayed for a nation under God. George Washington wrote in his diary at the time, Quote, went to church and fasted all day. John Adams wrote in his diary, God grant us wisdom and fortitude. And there was another gentleman named Tom Cushing. He was a delegate from Massachusetts. He was also moved by prayer. And Tom Cushing asked the Continental Congress to be opened up in prayer, and his motion was passed. A nation under God, was born. Since then, we've elected both Republican and Democrats into office. Some have believed in prayer, some have not. But there's one thing that's not changed since that first Independence Day. Our nation needs men and women who lead our country to depend on God. Not only that, God is depending upon you and me, not just to be patriotic, <clears throat> but to also pray for our leaders in our country. You know, we're living in a day when we regularly learn of acts of terror, in a time when many, many troubling things are happening, in a time when our, our nation is being divided. And oftentimes there's one thing that stands in the way of God that's blessing a nation, and that's our prayers. Or should I say the lack of prayers. It doesn't really matter how we feel about the person in office. What matters is whether or not we're willing to stand in the gap for our country. I'm proud to be an American, and I hope you are too. Today, I hope you value your right to be patriotic in a land that is free. And I hope you will exercise your freedom to pray to God that we as his people, as a nation as well, will turn from sin and look to God in faith. Patriotism and prayer go well together. In fact, a believer in Christ cannot have one without the other. Thank you, Father, for this brief devotional, a passage of Scripture that draws us to pray for our nation, to pray for its people, to confess our sins, and to seek you for healing for our land. So, God, we come to you in prayer even now, thanking you that you are a God who hears and answers prayer. And we ask you, as we celebrate our freedom this week, Independence Day, that you'll call us to, to get on our knees in prayer and to be fervent and passionate about coming to you on behalf of our nation. And uh, Lord, we look forward to seeing what you're going to do as we, your children, become obedient to you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.